following on from previous episode, we were looking at the requirements for making an ESO set out in section 20 of the Act. We're going to follow on with section 21 now. Determination of risk. For the purposes of this part, the Supreme Court is not required to determine that the risk of an eligible offender committing serious terrorism offence is more likely than not in order to determine that there is an unacceptable risk of the offender committing such an offence. It's a, a bit of a mouthful, but let's have a look at it. For the purposes of this part, the previous part, section 20, the Supreme Court is not required to determine that the risk of an eligible offender committing a serious offence is more likely than not in order to determine that there is an unacceptable risk of the offender committing such an offence. So just saying that they're going to commit an offence or even having the belief that that may or may not be true doesn't determine in the court's eyes or doesn't have to be used in the court's eyes to make that assessment and determine whether to apply the ESO or not. The, the court doesn't know beforehand when the application is being asked for the state of the offender. So the court is at liberty to make a decision based on what's in front of them, basically. Section 6. Section 4 of the Act defines a serious terrorism offence as an offence against Part 5.3 of the Commonwealth Criminal Code for which the maximum penalty is seven or more years of imprisonment. So this is the Criminal Code 1995. I wouldn't call it the Commonwealth Criminal Code because it's codified law of the Crimes Act 1914. 7. Section 6 and 7 deal with the persons to whom the Act can apply. Section 7 defines an eligible offender as 7. Eligible offender. In this Act, an eligible offender is a person who is 18 years or older serving or continuing to be supervised or detained under this Act after serving a sentence of imprisonment for a New South Wales indictable offence. 8. Section 6 defines the words serving a sentence of imprisonment. 6. Serving sentence of imprisonment. In this Act, a person is serving a sentence of imprisonment for an offence if a. the person is serving a sentence of imprisonment for the offence by way of full-time detention or b. the person is on parole in respect of the offence. 9. The State says that for the purposes of Section 20C of the Act, the defendant is a convicted New South Wales terrorism activity offender as defined in section 10 of the Act relevantly as follows section 10 convicted New South Wales terrorism activity offender I in this Act an eligible offender is a convicted New South Wales terrorism activity offender if the offender is serving or is continuing to be supervised or detained under this Act after serving a sentence of imprisonment for a New South Wales indictable offence, the offender's offence, and any of the following apply in respect of the offender. So there must already be within the framework of this terrorism activity to have the following apply. 
can't just turn around and point fingers and then say make this apply if anybody hasn't acted in the way of the act previous to making this accusation. C. The offender I. Is making or has previously made any statement or is carrying out or has previously carried out any activity advocating support for any terrorist act or violent extremism or to has or previously had any personal or business association or other affiliation with any person group of persons or organization that is or was advocating support for any terrorism act or violent extremism so you would have to kind of be linked to a known terrorist organization and that's what is being pushed here in that trying to frame Australian people as terrorists to their own state and this is being done by New South Wales Police the plaintiff on behalf of the state of New South Wales the plaintiff and this is the legislation that's involved in the plaintiff the police in the state of New South Wales application against someone's beliefs. The offender at C2 has or previously had any person or business association or other affiliation with any person, group of persons or organisation that is or was advocating support for any terrorist act or violent extremism. They are trying to frame Australians in a manner that you can see as we move forward becomes quite farcical but then turns the shoe onto the other foot. We'll have to go through this in parts obviously because this is a large document but we can see how we're getting to a very hardcore level of legislation when it's the police that are protecting the state. It's the state of New South Wales versus an offender. An offender that committed what offences exactly is more to the question because that should never have led to where we're going now. So you can appreciate the, the depth that this is when you consider that the United Nations knocked on the door of one of these facilities and was denied access. And that's something that we're going to have to venture into as we go through what is now defined as publishable court material that forms precedence to a whole bunch of other stuff. Well, what we can see from up to now is a threat to life or limb is really the cause here on it's all about life or limb, really. It's the threat to harm or injury of another. It's failure in defence of self and other and property. Terrorism acts tend to be acts that are designed to harm, damage, property, life or limb cause a person's death, cause them to lose their leg, cause them to go through property damage, burn their house down, that kind of thing, is defined as an act of terrorism. 
So is it okay for the state to do these things? But that's the, the, the dark line in the sand that everyone wants to ignore. It is what's the state's responsibility in these matters?